What's the word, y'all? It's your boy Jay Slice, and I'm about to show y'all how to do this little smooth teleportation effect that you see right here. Let's jump into After Effects and get crazy. All right, y'all. So when you get up into this, man, first of all, just find a clip that you want to rotoscope. Grab the rotoscope tool and just make a clean roto around your subject. You want this thing to be as clean as possible. Don't play around with this. Now go ahead and freeze that rotoscope. Now I want you to duplicate this layer, solo it, then unfreeze it, come into the rotoscope and invert it. Once you invert it, just freeze it one more time. Now I want you to take that inverted layer, change shift edge to negative 100, and then come down to the content of wheel fill area, change it to object, turn on light correction, strong, and then hit generate layer. Just make sure your project is saved. Let that go through. Now you see we have somewhat of a clean plate, but you see some colors and some craziness going on here, but I'm about to show you how to distort this now. So bring your subject above your fill layer. We don't see it, but trust me, that's your subject layer. Before we add the distortion, let's refine the edges on this subject. So let's add a refined soft matte. And you could just copy these settings here. Now you can pre-compose that and name the subject. And once you change the name, let's just duplicate it. Let's just add a fill to the duplication. Let's change the fill color to white and then let's just drag it down to the bottom. Now we're gonna name that layer matte. Then we're gonna work on the clean plate. So let's turn off our subject and let's add an adjustment layer above our fill layer. Now let's add the store chroma to that adjustment layer. And let's go up into the lens and let's use our last layer as the mask. Let's change the source to effects and mask and make sure when you add the distort chroma to not just only copy my settings, but the main goal is to have this like outlining the subject, having it look very bubbly and make sure you always invert the map. You feel what I'm saying? You invert it, you blur it. And sometimes you might have to bring the amount to the negatives or the positives, depending on either the lighting or what's actually uh, next to your subject and stuff like that. But you really always want to invert and blur the map. You can copy these settings right here and trust me, you'll get this result in most occasions. So yeah, moving on. Now I want you to turn back on your main subject layer Add a crop edges and delete all of the options besides the crop bottom. Now bring your transition completion to about half. And make sure you get a nice smooth feather going on there before you hit the stopwatch. Did you really do the front? And now you can bring it down to 100, feel what I'm saying? Once you get comfortable and hit the stopwatch on transition completion. Come to the end of your clip and just bring it to zero. Now hit you on your keyboard, highlight both of your keyframes, go into the graph mode and just smoothing that out. Next, add an adjustment layer and on that adjustment layer, drop universe heat wave. I want you to copy these settings. Make sure you open those distortion settings so you can see the heat size and stuff. Just up that to 100. Now with the subject layer selected, add a turbulent displace to that. Once you add the turbulent displace, up the amount to maybe 85, almost 90, and then go to the end of your clip and just bring it down to zero. Now let's highlight both of those keyframes. Let's go to the graph mode and let's ease it out. Now let's hit the stopwatch on evolution and let's have it at a number in the negatives. Then we could come to the end of our clip and boost the evolution up to a number like 200, 300. Then let's repeat the same process. Let's highlight both of those keyframes, hit F9 and ease them Johns out. Now let's copy the turbulent displace and let's make sure we pre-compose our clip. When we pre-compose it, make sure we're on the first frame in the timeline. And then let's just paste it onto our subject. And now we get this bubbly look. You might have to go back into the composition and make a few adjustments, but that's the gist of this effect. 
I didn't add this to the recording, but if you go to the matte layer and you add a fractal noise, if you copy those settings, you would get that bubbly look that you see in the background. It's optional, you don't have to put it, but it does complement this effect a little bit better. I figured that out after making this tutorial, but you feel me? If y'all enjoyed that, drop a like and subscribe. I'm going to be back tomorrow with another one and peace out.